What's up, fans? Massive. This is TVFN. I'm your host, D-A-D-E, and we got breaking news today. The fans have agreed the terms with Vic Fangio on the deal that makes him the NFL's highest paid coordinator per sources. It's a three-year deal with the fourth-year team option, and I'm happy about this signing, even though I wanted us to sign a disciple, which was Sean Desai because he's younger and he can run both Fangio's scheme and Pete Carroll's scheme as well. But Fangio, he's been in the game for 24 years, and he's 64 years old, and he's a tree with branches. Desai's one of the branches. Chargers head coach Brandon Staley, he's also a branch. Joe Barry, he's a branch. And there's others around the league. And like I said, he's been coaching for a long time, and I think this was a smart move that kind of reminds me of Sean McVay and how he built the Rams coaching staff by hiring Wade Phillips so he can install that Phillips 3-4. And as a young coach, that's kind of what you want to do. It's a good approach. It's a good way to, to have stability on a specific side of the ball. That way you don't have to concentrate so much on, you know, and oversee if the defense is doing their job or not. You got a competent coach that has years of experience who can do all the overseeing for you. That way you could just focus on attacking teams with your offensive schemes. And I think that's what Mike McDaniel was going for. And, you know, when I when you look back at Flores, he did the same thing. He did it just on the opposite side. He's a defensive minded head coach who's going to call the plays on defense so he needed a veteran offensive coordinator that's why he hired chan gailey someone who had years of experience but his only problem was chan gailey was too close to ryan fitzpatrick and didn't put the focus on tour but back to fangio um we all kind of anticipated this considering that you know mike mcdaniel and vic fangio they share the same agent so there's a connection there and the added bonus of having a tree is that your coaching room you know it can eventually grow and you can have you know some of his disciples become your defensive coordinator in the future if he retires so that's something to consider you know um you know i, I think of like i said joe barry Brandon Staley, what if he gets fired from the Chargers? You know, if, if they flop this year and they don't make the playoffs or they get bounced in the first round, he's been the scapegoat this year. So he'll probably be the scapegoat next year because no one believes that it's Herbert throwing pick sixes that's causing them to lose. They all think it's only the defense. So he's going to be the scapegoat. We might be able to add him to the staff since he's worked with Fangio in the past and he could probably be the successor. And I think Fangio has the potential to elevate this defense with his unique alignments and the schemes that are pretty much spreading throughout the league and it's trending. And I think the player on our team that's probably going to benefit the most and who's the most excited and that's going to show the most progress on the field is Bradley Chubb. That's right. I said it. Bradley Chubb, who some fans think was a wasted pick, was a wasted move, and they think he's been a bust already. With Fangio, that's going to change. And he played for Vic when he was the head coach at Denver. Vic worked with Ed Donatello, and he built a defense last year in 2021, or well, the year before last, that finished third in points allowed with 322. The team also allowed 36 touchdowns, but only 31 was against the defense. Um, three was allowed by the offense, and the special teams allowed two. What's most impressive also is that the Broncos rank second only to the Patriots in points allowed. So that's what, we, that's what we're looking for. We need to reduce the opponent's points and we need to score more points as common sense. And the Broncos also finished eighth in yards allowed, six in passer rating allowed, 85.0 for the most part per quarterback, 15th in average yards per carry, 4.29, that's a problem. And third in red zone touchdown percentage allowed, which is good. So it's been but don't break. But his weakness, you know, in his defense is the run. So we got to be able to stop the run. You know, he, they the Broncos have been gashed at times, you know. So that's the only thing. And, and that's pretty. that was pretty much the problem with Flores' defense. It was been but don't break. 
great at getting turnovers, but you can run on it. So we got to be able to stop the run in the middle. Christian Wilkins and Zach Siler got to do their job like how they did this year, but hopefully Fangio can find a way to utilize them even more to get pressure up the gut. And I, I think it's going to be interesting to see how he's going to use this defense with the players we currently have because remember, we've been built to be a 3-4 hybrid defense. Is he going to devise game plans that's going to fit the talent that we already have or is he going to force the players to fit his scheme? You know, that's the question that I have. And yeah, we know Chubb is going to fit in, but what about Andrew Van Ginkle? What about Wilkins? What about Emmanuel Ogba and the other players? Josh Boyer, he liked the blitz a lot and mix in that amoeba look with zero blitzes and linebackers dropping back. Fangio doesn't really blitz that much. He don't blitz as much as Boyer and, and you know, Flores did. He relies more on the front four getting pressure with two uh, deep safety shell to disguise coverages in the secondary. That way he can, you know, you know, disguise his coverages whenever he wants on either side of the, of the grass and the turf. And, you know, I mean, the only problem, like I said, is it, it can be gashed. I'm not going to lie, it can be gashed. But I do think that Javon Holland and Brandon Jones are going to see a spike in their production, especially Javon, because Fangio's scheme, even though it can be gashed by the run, it depends on how he play it, because it does rely on his safeties playing closer to the box than normal. And you look at how Fangio used Justin Simmons in Denver. Justin had 80 tackles, one sack, five interceptions, and he was a ball hawk back there with rangy athleticism to go along with it. So I expect that output to translate to our safeties as well. Holland, I think, is a better free safety than, Josh, than uh, Justin Simmons, in my opinion, and I think he could dominate in this attack, without a doubt. And you look at his footage from 2021, Holland could tackle, and what I notice is when he tackles, he got that pop to his tackle. Um, you know, he ain't just pulling you down or you know just tackling you by the by the you know by the shin. He's coming directly at you, and he's laying that he's laying that wood head and shoulders. He's hitting you, trying to decapitate you know any type of offensive weapon that's on the field, and that's what I like. And you know, we're set at that position from what I can see. I know that there's rumors that we might be interested in Jordan Poirier from the Bills, but why make that move when we really got we already got two young stars at safety there? I think Brandon Jones is going to be a star. Don't be turned off by his injury. He's young and he just needs to develop at safety. And we just got to also find a developmental safety. Maybe in the third round, we got two number threes. Maybe we can find a safety that can replace Eric Rowe. Cause I, I think he I think he should probably be cut. Uh, not because he's a bad safety. I just think I'm not I think he fits more Flores scheme. I don't know if he's gonna fit Fangio scheme. And I got a video coming soon where I talk about the teams that the Dolphins should keep an eye on. The Broncos are definitely one of those teams because they got a lot of assets that I think we could we could try to acquire and procure from their roster. You know, you look at cornerback Patrick Sertain too. He's one of them, you know. Maybe we can have him replace Byron Jones. His dad played for us, just left to go uh, coach another team. It's all right. Maybe we can get his son on the team, bring him back. You know, I mean, it's Patrick Sertain. And, you know, you have some defensive coordinators who prefer wide fronts, like the wide nine. I think Kevin Coyle or Matt Burke. Matt Burke, I think he ran the wide nine. And I think Vance Joseph probably also ran it. Vic Fangio uses a lot of odd and under 4-3 tight fronts to close creases in the middle. So, you know, and he's shown on tape the savvy to use multiple fronts as well. I've seen on tape him take 3-4 groupings and morph them into 4-3 under fronts pre-snap. So that's something to look for in our defense. Plus, you look at his coaching career, he's learned on the Dom Capers who incorporates zone blitzes and uses three, four fronts. And Fangio is also known around the league for, for running the six, one tilt, the six, one tilt for alignment. And, and that can be problematic for offenses. So I like that as well. He's seen and ran various attacks and 
He can improve our linebacker play. He got plenty of experience coaching linebackers for all the old heads 40 and up who remember uh, the 80s Dome Patrol in New Orleans with the Saints with Pat Swilling and, and them other linebackers they had. So he got he, he knows what to look for. He might help us in the draft with finding a middle linebacker or make Channing Tindall a stud. You never know. And with Chubb, I think, you know, he could drop him in the coverage and, you know, line him up on the edge, standing up or with his hand in the dirt and use him as a jack edge hybrid chess piece that he could just move around like a rook or a bishop. And I just can't wait to talk about this and all of the changes, uh, you know, that's going to happen to this roster and this draft defensively. I still think we need another DT and a middle linebacker in the draft. So we'll see who else he brings in. And I wouldn't be surprised if there's turnover within the coaching staff because now that he's the D coordinator, he might bring some of his folks that was from Denver and the Bears to our our defense. Campanile might not be here. You never know. Um, But y'all let me know what y'all think about Vic being named the D.C. I know a lot of y'all are excited just like I am, but... You know, we got a long way to go still. A lot more to talk about, a lot more videos. Click subscribe and make sure and click the notification bell so you can hear it first. Till next time, signing off. Fins up, baby.